Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Eric with C Spot DFS, and these are my prize picks PGA plays for round one at the 2022 PGA Championship. Also, provide my strategies for rounds two, three, and four. But first, just a reminder if you haven't signed up for prize picks yet, I'm going to give you $20 if you use the promo code SWEETSPOT while you sign up. And of course, you're going to need to put an initial deposit of $20 in your account, and then I will send you $20 back. Plus, prize picks is going to match your deposit up to $100, so that $20 just turns into $40, and it's just going to cost you sign-up information and that initial deposit. So if you're interested in that, again, link in the description below. Let's go ahead and actually talk strategy first. So I always say this in all of these videos, check windfinder.com to see what the wind is doing. I also like to zoom out to show you where the golf course is, because sometimes it's tricky to find where these are. So find Tulsa, and then kind of this bottom uh, highway that's that that's you know circles Tulsa just scroll in right here and you're gonna find the golf course just a little south of that Southern Hills Country Club and of course you can look Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday all the wind forecasts at any point in time but I highly suggest you guys check it out the night before or the day of uh, if you didn't already know prize picks will have morning waves and afternoon waves you just got to look at the time uh, that the golfers are projected to go out at and then make sure you, you, you make your picks an hour beforehand because I believe they lock an hour before they actually tee off. So you have all that time for any afternoon times to come check out the weather or check out the wind at least. Um, but if not, check it the night before and make your selections, your picks the night before. That's why I'm doing this video so late. Um, I like to wait as long as I possibly can to make my picks. So I already have, and I'll share those a little bit later, but the strategy here is, you know, windfinder.com allows you to look at three hour increments for each day. So obviously check the days that the PJ championship is being played. I'm going to save y'all uh, Thursday and Friday's wind forecast. It's going to be windy as hell. And to me, there's really no difference between a 25 mile an hour wind and a 30 mile an hour wind. It's tough. Um, if we were talking somewhere between like a five mile an hour wind in the morning, uh you know thursday morning versus a 25 mile an hour wind in the afternoon i'd be like the morning is probably going to play much easier obviously than the afternoon so if the projections kind of you know don't reflect that you can take advantage of that but it's going to be nearly the same wind throughout the day so it, it, it gets up to 16 miles an hour on thursday at 10 a.m and it kind of just stays around there uh, 16 18 miles an hour so there isn't really a, uh, an advantage per wave. Um, just think, or just, you know, what we see Wednesday night. So you don't really, I mean, with the wind mile an hour that we have, the golf course is already tough. The wind is going to make it tougher. I think scores will be pretty high. So when we go and look at the boards, especially like, you know, anything with scores or strokes or anything like that, we are projecting this is going to, this is going to be a little difficult and birdies are probably going to be also very difficult uh, to make at this golf course. So we'll get into the, uh, into the boards here a little bit later. Thursday, Friday though, um, nearly the same wind. It's going to be really windy on Friday. And then it's, it looks like it's going to die down a little bit Saturday, Sunday. So either way, up to you guys, whether or not you want to come here, I highly suggest you guys do it. Also, for me, what I like to do is I like to wait, watch the, the tournament on a Thursday, determine how difficult the, the, the golf course is playing just by itself and how the, how the golfers are attacking it. And then I like to make more of my investments like Friday's round, Saturday, Sunday. Um, but I don't really like to go super deep in on Thursday. So it's just my strategy. But anyways, let's go ahead and look at the picks. Oh, wait, 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 wait. By the way, Prize Picks is doing a golf gauntlet. So it has 518, 519. So when I post this video, it should be right before midnight Eastern Standard Time. Make your selection because you have to on 518 and on 519 place an entry containing Tiger Woods. So if you do all four of these, you're going to get a free entry to win $1,000. So why not take advantage of it? This is going to be a fun time playing prize picks for a, a major championship they are doing a little promo here so yeah take advantage again if you haven't signed up there's a link in the description use the promo code sweet spot and i'm going to give you 20 bucks back as long as you make an initial deposit of at least 20 dollars so 
they have this little promo highly suggest you guys go play take advantage of it um yeah let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better so we have a ton of boards here strokes birdies are better greens and reg fairways hit holes played hole six hole 11 and hole 14 which just really has tiger woods i'm sure this will change uh as the day goes on because i believe they'll have more afternoon tea times that they'll show could be wrong on that but usually what i see is more golfers get placed in these as the day goes on so if you're seeing a hole play a little bit more challenging oh i suppose this is green and reg they're all green and regs just keep keep track of that throughout the day just double check to see how everyone's playing on it. And if it seems like it's very difficult to, to make or to hit the green on any of these, um, I think they're all par threes. So keep an eye on that and take advantage of it, obviously. Holes played is basically made cut. Everything's at 36.5. Um, I already made one of my picks associated with this. So we'll talk about that. But it's essentially who do you think is going to... Uh, well, wow, Brian Harmon, I guess, is going to start here at midnight or 11, or 11 p.m. I'm guessing that's a, a wrong time. Uh, that is a really weird lock. Anyways, but yeah, it, whoever you think is going to make the cut, obviously you would, choose, you would choose it right here. I don't really touch fairways hit or greens in regulation, especially not on a Thursday. Birdies are better is going to be fun to uh, try to project. A lot of really low projections. I will say this, even with how low this is, I would hit like the overs on Rory, anything that's 2.5, John Rahm. Uh, I'd probably go under with Scotty Scheffler, like two and a half. I think golfers can get to three and I'm not going to stick. Like I, I don't like making any selections that are just a flat number. Having that 0.5 will determine a winner or a loser. I don't want to tie. I want to maximize uh, my profits as much as I can. So yeah, everyone's about 2.5. We got some twos here. Uh, if anything ever fell to 1.5, I would just, I'd go, I'd hammer that like crazy. But anyways, yeah, 2.5, I think are, for some of these golfers, really good values. Like obviously you would want to hit the over on some of these. The ones at three, hit the under. It's very unlikely that they will score more birdies than any of these guys at 2.5, in all honesty. But I still think it's pretty capped. Like that's, it's not going to happen. Um, I like to stick to strokes personally. I think it's easier to forecast or to project what the score is going to be for some of these golfers. Uh, just based off of what we've heard from the golf course, everything that we have, you know, listened to or same thing, heard, listened, saw, I suppose. I didn't really see many of the golfers play practice rounds, but either way, everyone's saying this is going to be a challenging golf course. It's, um, it's a thinking man's golf course. So, again, Thursday, I like to be light with my selections. This all looks very enticing. 72, it's a par 70, by the way. So, 72, 72.5. I do think, you know, some golfers will shoot under par at this golf course. It's not going to be a lot. It might just be 10% of the field that shoots under par or maybe even less. Um, but par is 70. So, I think... You know, shooting under 72, I think like 30% of the field will shoot under 72. And that's where all of these projections are at. So it's obviously picking the right golfers, duh, of course. Um, but a lot of these, I think, are pretty conservative. So if you have a good feeling, and in all honesty, I don't think the morning really has an advantage over the afternoon. If it's going to be windy, the conditions won't be soft regardless. Yeah, sure, they'll be a little softer in the morning. But you just looked at the wind on Thursday. You know, it starts out at 15 miles an hour, 14 miles an hour in the morning, and it goes up to 16 in the afternoon, kind of, you know, goes up to 18 here and there. But there's not much of an advantage in the morning versus the afternoon. So I, I'm not going to try to take advantage of anything uh, AM, PM stack, anything like that. So totally up to you guys. But let's go ahead, let's get into my entries that I have selected. I did two. Uh, I do have strokes here, and then I also have cuts made, essentially. Holes played. So I am projecting Tiger Woods. 
hitting that over 36.5. So I think he makes the weekend. I don't think he's going to do well. I think he's, it's probably going to be the exact same thing we saw at Augusta. I think they talk about how hilly this golf course is, but they also say it's not nearly as hilly as Augusta, but it's like the second worst golf course for Tiger to play on. So it it's flatter, quote unquote flatter, but I, I just, I do think he makes the, the weekend. A lot of things that I've listened to that I see from Tiger's golf swing and, and you know, his, his demeanor and everything, I think he makes the weekend. I also think Tommy Fleetwood makes the weekend. I also think he does pretty well at this tournament. Aaron Wise, I don't know. I, I, I want to believe his putter is a liability. Well, actually, he's been putting better. But you put someone uncomfortable on the putting greens with wind blowing, it can be a little challenging. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on Aaron Wise a little bit. I'm also going to pick on Adam Hadwin. I just don't know if he has the strength to get around this golf course. And I'm not saying he's weak. Don't get me wrong. He's not weak. But where he excels is shot shaping. And when the wind is blowing really bad, yeah, shot shapes, like shaping shots would be a really good skill to have, but you also need to have a little firepower behind it. Um, and I just don't, I don't see it with him. I, I, and I also don't think his, his short game is good enough to get him around this golf course. So I'm going to go ahead and think, I'm going to say he's going to miss the cut. And then I went over with Sergio. Fantastic ball striker, hits a heavy golf ball, doesn't really get affected by the wind as much. I think he's poised to make the cut, to make the cut pretty easy. So those are my selections, you know, with the holes played, the, the made cut, basically, portion of it. And then when it comes to uh, strokes, I actually made this much earlier than what it ended up turning to, which I'm kind of disappointed because I would much rather have Justin Thomas under 72 than at 71.5. I'm going over with uh, Xander. And really, these these selections, you can't even get anymore anyways. It's actually changed. Like, Scheffler, I, at least I got this one. So I went over 71. I also went under with Shane Lowry at 71.5. I think he's at 72 right now. So it doesn't really dip, make a difference. It, it'll just help you out if you guys want to hit the unders there. Um, and I do think Tiger plays better than a 74. Like, if we think about his Masters on Thursday, he came out shooting pretty you know, pretty decent. Currently it's projected 74.5. I like that a little bit better. But yeah, Scotty's at 72 now, so I would definitely still hit the under there. Uh JT 72, I'd hit the under there. Yeah, I'm not as scared as most people when it when it comes to the wind. I, I still think this golf course is gonna be tough, but I don't think it's gonna be that tough for for many people, especially even with the wind. So, anyways, that's the PGA championship. Uh, edition of my prize picks and strategies for rounds two, three, and four. A little longer than usual, but hey, I wanted to be more in depth with this one. I don't do uh, videos for rounds two, three, and four. I just don't have the time. Maybe in the in the future somewhere, I will start doing that. But I just like to put out you know my picks for round one, and then just give my strategies for rounds two, three, and four. Um, like I said, I like to sit and watch first and then put more uh, selections in there. Again, remember the uh, the promo that they're running with. I think might, might as well, you know, especially if you haven't signed up yet, $20 worth of PGA entries. Hey man, you just get, if you sign up using the promo code SweetSpot, you're gonna get $40 in, um, $40 for free, basically. You just gotta sign up and, and put that initial deposit of $20 in, Price picks will match your deposit. It'll go up to 40 bucks. And then I give you that $20 back and it's free for you. So you'll be able to do this. No problem. Use that promo code sweet spot. Um, and do it before Friday because I get uh, an email with all new signups the next day. So do this Thursday, do this either when you watch this today, Wednesday night or Thursday, make that deposit. I will get that report. I will give you that $20 back. Um, and then you can go ahead and place that that entry for place twenty dollars plus worth more of PJ only entries. Anyways, that's it. Way too long. All right. Good luck, everyone. Let's win some money this week. Bye bye.